Jim, now he knows it happens. He watches for it happening. He sees it start, he sees it finish. He licks the wound he expected and never asks why. He knows. He always knew. Someone knew before him a long time ago. Someone who had wolves for pets and lions for night conversants. Hell, Jim doesn't know with his mind, but his body knows. And while Will's putting a bandage on his latest scratch, Jim's ducking, weaving, bouncing away from the knockout blow, which must inevitably come. So there they go. Jim running slower to stay with Will. Will running faster to stay with Jim. Jim breaking two windows in a haunted house because Will's along. Will breaking one window instead of none because Jim's watching. God, how we get our fingers in each other's clay. That's friendship, each playing the potter to see what shapes we can make of the other. Hey guys, welcome back to Zim Reads. I'm your host, Zim. It is October 24th, around 10 p.m. at night. We're a week away from Halloween And I promised you all an October spooky book, and I've got a review for you tonight. I've got a review for you tonight. I am giddy to talk about this book. I really do miss the time of talking about books in person. So I'm going to raise a glass to the days when COVID is finally over. We are talking about a distant future. I think it's not around the corner Don't believe anyone who tells you that it is. It's not. Don't believe any president with big swoopy hair who tells you that it is. It's not. But I'm raising a glass to the days when it's over and we can finally gather and talk about books in person. Not that any of you have ever gathered with me and talked about books in person. But when you get to do that with your friends and family and your book clubs and your fellow students or fellow co-workers or whoever you do it with, that will be a special day. So I raise a glass of Irish whiskey, single pot still whiskey. And I'd like to say, may these days be remembered My toast is this. May these days be remembered well enough that we can laugh. What do I want to say about COVID? What do I want to raise my glass to here on October 24th? I raise a glass to the day. No. Here is to the good rain that farmers pray for. No. Who has a good COVID toast? Here we are at what feels like the end of the world sometimes. No. Although that's a little bit dramatic. Toasts on the fly are, they're hit or miss. Here's to the future of the human race. After all, this garbage finally subsides and we are found swimming in the wake of that. No. If you've got a good COVID toast, put it in the, in, in the comments below. Let's get on with the book review. I'm excited to talk about the book tonight because it's a unique experience. I had a unique experience with this book. I had a unique experience with this book. I went in to reading this book just kind of without any real conceptions, preconceptions, except the fact that it's a scary book. It's a spooky book. And I was looking for a spooky book. Other than Frankenstein, because I tried Frankenstein. I haven't made it through Frankenstein yet. If you've got a problem with that, please put that in the comments. I'd love to hash it out with you. And if you're Katie Books, if you're Kieran of Katie Books, and you've got a problem with it, you know, 
Tell it to the cat. Am I right? We'll talk about it when we book box at the monkey bars, 3 p.m. Monday after school. Be there. Be there. We're going to figure out a time to box over this book. Katie Books, you're going down. You're going down. You're going to feel my fury. You're going to walk away bruised and battered and beat up because I am not giving you an inch, my friend. It's happening. Get ready. People at home, set your watch. Mark your calendars. Set up your TiVos to record that junk because it's going down. It's going down. Frankenstein, Mary Shelley, Katie Books, Zim Reads, a book boxing battle. Get ready for the Triple B book boxing battle. It's happening. Be there or be square, Kieran of KD Books, and your Frankenstein obsession, and your tattoos of Mary Shelley. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I sleep fine at night. I sleep fine at night. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Kieran of KD Books. Back to the point. I tried Frankenstein wasn't making it happen so I grabbed the next scary book I had on my shelf and it was something wicked where is it something wicked this way comes by Ray Bradbury you may have heard of Ray Bradbury you may have not it had eluded me that this Ray Bradbury had written anything of significance or acclaim but he has you may have heard of it it's a book called Fahrenheit 451, 451, Fahrenheit 451, written by Ray Bradbury, who also wrote Something Wicked This Way Comes, among a myriad of other mostly science fiction novels. In fact, you can see it here on the book. Zoom in there, the world's greatest living science fiction writer. He's no longer living. He passed away in 2012. This is outdated, but... At the time, Ray Bradbury, the man, okay? I hadn't read Fahrenheit 451, 451, as Ray Bradbury affectionately refers to it. I still haven't read it, although I have it and I started it due to this book. This is the next book I picked up on my shelf, expecting merely to find a scary book. In fact... I was thinking this could prove to be a very scary book. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because I live in an old house that I sometimes believe is haunted. I'm sometimes like, you know, the thought just creeps in. I know a little bit too much about the guy who built the house. So I'm always like looking around corners. And I'm always like, uh... You would have, this is something you would have done. This kind of haunting is the kind of haunting you would do. I'm freaking myself out right now. Some poltergeist shit is about to happen probably. You don't know what you're getting yet when you open this up. You don't know if this is going to be some scary Stephen King-esque shit that just rattles your bones. You don't know. Well, that's what I went in not knowing. The book opens. Jim Nightshade and William Halloway. Will and Jim. Two boys aged 13 going on 14. One born on October 30th, a minute before the stroke of midnight. And one born on October 31st, a minute after the stroke of midnight. Practically twins, except... Twins of different fins, as they say in the dolphin world, but in the human world, brothers from another mother. Twins from another mother, not truly brothers. We've got Will and Jim, best friends. They live next door to each other, the main characters, Jim and Will. Ray Bradbury tells us right away, one year, Halloween came on October 24th. 
and it was the year before Jim and Will turned 14, and that was the October week when they grew up overnight and were never so young anymore. A delicious beginning, a delicious way to start the novel. The prologue deserves a claim, okay? And then we move into the first chapter, and we see Jim and Will kind of hanging out. It's autumn. Now, what does Ray Bradbury do so stunningly throughout the novel? Ray Bradbury is... He is capturing. He is containing. He is just what is the word framing distilling he is uh, he is he is giving us a song we were born remembering that is what ray bradbury does throughout this book he gives us a song we were born remembering a song that we had forgotten we knew he doesn't bring it to us outside coming in. He draws it out of the marrow of our bones. That is what Ray Bradbury does. He gives us fall. He gives us autumn. He gives us autumn in so many ways. So many metaphors, so much imagery, so much prose, poetic prose and language. Ray Bradbury bowled me over with what he was able to do with language, with the English language. He bowled me over. <sighs> That's what Bradbury does, is he calls out of the marrow of your bones the song you were born remembering. And he starts out with Jim and Will in the thick of autumn. It's autumn. They're together. And who comes strolling by but this old lightning rod salesman? Ooh. It starts out, I mean, it's so creepy. A storm is brewing, and this old, old man with this leather satchel of all this iron mongery, all these iron lightning rods that he's going door to door to sell. And he starts talking to Jim Nightshade. And he says, what a name. And he starts talking about how a storm is coming. And one of your houses is going to be hit by lightning tonight. Ooh. What are you talking about? Out of the imagination of Ray Bradbury, this whole scene unfolds and your, your hair is standing up. It's so creepy. I find the scariest... Things are the unknown. You don't know this guy. You don't know his intentions. You don't know what he's seen or where he's been or why he so adamantly knows lightning is striking one of your houses tonight. So he gives Jim Nightshade a lightning rod for free and says, put it on your house. The storm is coming. You'll be dead by morning if you don't. What an opening. Come on. It's the imagination, okay? I'm not one for scary books. I'm not even about that, like, element of the literary world. But God, what a way to open a book. What a way. Now, what does Bradbury proceed to do through the story? And I'll, I can give you synopsis. We'll go into synopsis. But I just want to swell about Bradbury right now. And something wicked this way comes because this is lovely. This is lovely. What does Bradbury give us? I already told you, out of the marrow of your bones, he calls forth a song you were born remembering. He does it page after page after page. What he gave to me was boyhood, childhood, and nostalgia. There's so much, like, poignant, nuanced, precise language in Bradbury's prose that you feel all those feelings that you might feel if you were walking down the street on an autumn day 
and the wind struck your nostrils just right. The temperature was just right. There was a scent from your childhood in the air just right, and your hair just happened to blow with that breeze just right. To have that moment of revisitation, of flashback, visceral flashback to your childhood. That is what Bradbury is able to do with language. Remove the breeze, remove the scent of autumn in the air, remove the movement around you, the colors, the tilt of the sun, remove all of that and all you've got are words on a page. Words on a page. And Bradbury is able to hand deliver from the grave now. Hand deliver you the same visceral nostalgia page after page after page over and over again i was knocked flat this is more than a fun scary creepy spooky halloween book it's far beyond that bradbury is doing something that is significant and mattered to me as a reader because he was he was doing what i look to books for and he was revealing myself to myself he was calling forth the song i was born remembering <sighs> what bradbury does is gives us something so special what do we have? We have that nostalgia. We have autumn distilled down for us and almost right in our face. We can feel, we can feel it. We almost hold hands with the season. We become almost more intimately acquainted with the season of autumn than we were as we filtered it through our own capabilities of processing what autumn was. Bradbury makes us more intimate with autumn. We become more intimate with the season. That's powerful. That's amazing. He gives us boyhood, the experience of childhood as a boy in the 50s. The imagery and the metaphor and the way Bradbury can wield the language. It's amazing. Something wicked this way comes is a quote from Shakespeare, in fact. What did I find in this book besides what I've already rambled on and on about having found? This has become a friend to me. This book has become a friend to walk through the years with. I will undoubtedly revisit this book over the years many times. I will read this book to my son. I will read this book multiple times. When that song I was born remembering begins to dull and I can't hear it as clearly as I do now in the aftermath of reading this masterpiece of a book that sneaks up on you because you pick it up expecting a spooky story and you do get that, but you walk away having been reshaped inside you walk away having been rearranged in some way you are sure was profound and in a way that you hope will be permanent go find this book read this book it's a quick read it will it will do something to you if you're in the United States of America and you are 18 years of age or older, I strongly encourage you to get out and vote. Early voting is available in many states, if not all states where the polls are still open. November 3rd is right around the corner. Go out and vote. It is such an important election 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you go and pick up Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I hope you find what I found in it. I hope it calls to the marrow of your bones and that song that you were born remembering bursts out of your seams and leaves you slightly, if not mostly, unraveled. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Happy Halloween. Get out and vote. Something wicked this way comes. Go find a lightning rod salesman in your town and ask him for the copy that's in his back pocket because you know he's reading it. Alright. Good night.